Bethesda, how the mighty have fallen. What was once the gold standard for open world action RPGs has become the laughing stock of fans and critics alike. Bethesda has been in the news a lot recently as the poster child for laissez-faire incompetence and blunders that's run by a shady snake oil salesman. You want to see something strange and mystical? No! Get out of here with that watch! Lay off the poor beavers, will ya? Jeez! Lately, it seems that they just can't do anything without having it backfire in some shape or form, and then they end up making it worse. But that doesn't bother them because it just works. Yeah, they said the same thing about The Purge. Picking just 10 fails to put on this list seems like an underperformance, but we can only do so much in one video. And I can't think of a better way to spend my time! <laughs> Nothing comes to mind. It just works, it just works, it last time it shows Something about a new Bethesda game. I can't wait to tell all my friends about it. Dang it! Got blacklisted. Okay, okay, that's an unfair oversimplification. Around 2013, Kotaku, one of the most well-known gaming blogs of all time, managed to get a hold of some leaked information about Fallout 4. Bethesda took it well. There's a leak in the boat! If by well, you mean completely blacklisting Kotaku from early copies and access to any of their games. Now, to be fair, Bethesda does have a right to be angry that Kotaku leaked something they obviously wanted to keep a surprise. In fact, Kotaku is proud of leaking the stuff because they care about the readers so much. On the other hand, blacklisting a news outlet for years, especially not even telling them, is a bit of an overreaction It makes the company look kind of sleazy. And the sketchiness didn't stop there. Around 2016, right before Doom was coming out, Bethesda updated its policy for reviewers where they would send out review copies of their game the night before its release. According to them, they love reviewers and want everyone to experience their games at the same time. Translation? Now, Doom turned out fantastic in the end, thank goodness, but again, this policy makes them look really suspicious. Look, we can debate about what's right and wrong until we're blue in the face, but reviewers and journalists, the good ones anyway, are there to uncover the truth. They take it upon themselves to let consumers know if a game is really worth the hype or if they'll just be wasting their money. If you deny them the chance to do their job, it's gonna make you look like you got something scandalous to hide and hinder people's trust in you. And to be fair, it hasn't happened yet which is why it's so low on the list. But given the recent decisions, can you really blame us for being a little... nervous? In this day and age of big budget AAA releases, games are becoming more and more ambitious, promising more and more features that will revolutionize gaming. And it's only to be expected that said features don't always make it into the games. Now, to be fair, this isn't always intentional. Sometimes what you promised in the trailer ends up being something that you just can't implement. Many times, we gamers take the process of game development for granted. However, Todd Howard seems to drop honeyed lies more than Sean Murray, promising that Fallout 3 will have 200 individual endings, Oblivion has radiant, unscripted NPCs, Skyrim will have infinite quests, unique handcrafted dungeons, Fallout 4's engine is flawless and bug-free, the list goes on. Of course, when the games actually come out, the story is always the same. You lied to me! <laughs> Now, the reason it's so low on the list is that these days, people have wisened up to Bethesda's silver-tongued hyperbole and were able to easily see through them. Sometimes. Todd's charming smile and demeanor fooled a lot of people for Fallout 76. And hey, give Bethesda some credit. They didn't use pure CGI and claim it was gameplay. In fall 2006, Bethesda announced they'd be working with Zombie Studios on a tactical first-person shooter based on the autobiography by real-life Navy SEAL Richard Barsink... Mar Richard Mar... The game was called Rogue Warriors Black Razor. Unfortunately, Bethesda had to be that one bratty kid who's super picky with their food and completely dropped Zombie Studios, starting fresh by working with Rebellion Developments instead and shortened the title to Rogue Warriors. The game finally released in 2009 and... I call it bold and bright. More like belongs in the trash! Ah! And Boy, what a mess. For starters, if this was really based on Marcinko's life, which I really doubt, then his life must have been a Michael Bay movie. And of course, it wouldn't be your typical super awesome American hero game without our darling main protagonist swearing every 10 seconds. 
Seriously, we didn't swear this much in the Marine Corps, and I was there! You gotta be fucking kidding me. Bring the noise, bitch! Send me the bill, suckers! Drop dead, motherfucker, you fucking amateurs! Yeah, hey, Dante, I'm sorry I made fun of you. Fuck you! Yeah, I deserve that. Have the icing on this cake of mediocrity, a broken combat system, glitches sprinkled everywhere, and some of the most boring gunplay of the genre. It's also incredibly short. It's also less of a birthday cake and more of a cupcake. You can beat it in two hours. But with how terrible the game is, that's probably a blessing. Critics tore this game a new one, as they should, and looking back, it's kind of funny. This broken, glitchy snooze fest was what Bethesda wanted. They could have kept Zombie Studios on board and done it their way. It could have actually been better. But hey, they got what they wanted, and now they gotta live with it. Makes you wonder, though, what was so bad about the original game that this was preferable? The year was 2017. The event was E3. The company was Bethesda. This is how it all went so very wrong. Bethesda Land, for those who have never heard of it, not that I blame you, was Bethesda's gimmick for E3 2017. They promised it would be an out of this world experience with attractions connected to all their properties. As seems to be a running theme, we were disappointed. I give you Bethesda Land. It just works. Bethesda Land was more basic than your average county fair, boasting only a few stalls for food and entertainment and a single small Ferris wheel. Possibly even worse, the whole thing was hosted outside, in Southern California, in June. To add on to the sweltering wait times and lines, the spot they rented out was far too small, so people were packed like a bunch of sardines. The worst offense? For all the hype Bethesda Land tried to generate, the only real announcements were for re-releases. They could have just had a regular, simple E3 presentation, but instead, they put all this extra effort into disguising the fact they had a lackluster year. I never heard anyone claim Bethesda always makes sense. Back in the yesteryear of gaming, when games wanted to add new content, developers would make expansion packs, and unlike microtransactions or other ways you pay for new content, these added significant changes to the pre-existing game. Bethesda's put out some very good ones, such as the Shivering Isles. Then, in April 2006, Bethesda decided to try something new for their then-popular title, Oblivion. An add-on that cost significantly less than a full-on expansion and had just about as much content as well. For the bomb price of $5, Horse armor. This is both uncomfortable and gaudy. Also, it pinches in places. Wait, no, 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 no! Fans and critics alike lambasted Bethesda for this joke of a game add-on. While Bethesda would go on to release two normal expansions for Oblivion later, which were really good, they would also release seven other small add-ons that included a bit more content than just a single cosmetic. However, the damage was done, and people still make the horse armor joke as an example of what bad DLC can look like. But with the way the market has gone with microtransactions, loot boxes, and cosmetics, maybe it's Bethesda who got the last laugh. And that leads us to... You know what I love about PC gaming? The modding community! And I want to encourage our audience to financially support mod development by giving me a cut of all the money. If Bethesda games are known for one thing, it would be how massive of a modding community their titles have. Fans have done everything from retexturing outdated assets to making entire new games. When Valve and Bethesda announced they would be expanding Steam's workshop functions allowing you to pay for some mods, it backfired. Horribly. After an immense public backlash, Valve cancelled the whole project and swept it under the rug to be forgotten. However, Bethesda learned absolutely nothing, as a few years later they would release the Creation Club, a neat way for you to get new fan-made content for their games at a price. Bethesda themselves insist that you aren't paying for mods, even though the content is made by modders, and 
modifies the game. And okay, how stupid do you think we are? A majority of the items released so far are really just cosmetic add-ons, and a lot of them are bad. There's a lot of videos on YouTube which showcases the Creation Club paid mods versus what modders themselves have made, and it's actually embarrassingly, hilariously bad. Look, I get it. You want to give back to your passionate communities. That's fine. But how can a team of professionals make a worse product than a few people with drive and a computer? And unfortunately, that isn't the only woe that the modding community has with Bethesda. Modifications, or mods for short, are some of the greatest things happening in gaming. They allow you to re-experience your favorite games in all kinds of new and interesting ways. And Bethesda's modding tools have provided prospective developers the ability to create all kinds of new content. Heck, some of the greatest games out right now are just mods. The problem is that Bethesda seems content to let modders take care of the issues they themselves caused in their games. You know, it's a bad sign when unofficial patches that fix bugs are some of the most downloaded mods. I mean, it's not like Bethesda has the time or resources to fix it themselves or anything. We have technology. Not to mention, anytime Bethesda tries to take something that modders did and implement it themselves, they don't do it very well. Bethesda's it just works mentality seems to be paying off though, as they're content to just sit back and let the fans fix the problems for them. Of course, Bethesda wouldn't have to rely on their passionate modders so much if their design wasn't so faulty. Which leads us to... That happened. Bethesda let that happen. While the creation engine may have been reliable before, Bethesda likes to pull a telltale gains by refusing to update the engine, which results in some consistently terrible graphics and persistent glitches. Some of them are harmless and silly, to the point where Bethesda believes, not unfoundedly, that patching them would be detrimental. Most are not. One of the most infamous cases was the Glitch of Doom from Elder Scrolls Oblivion, where after a certain amount of hours playing, the animation would start slowing down and the game just became unplayable. Another case was that the Fallout 3 expansion, The Pit, for the Xbox 360, where all we got was an empty, corrupted space full of big Metal Gear Solid references. Yeah! How does they put up with those things? If that weren't bad enough, it seems like Bethesda is cursed when they go to launch a new game, as almost every launch they've released is met with horrendous design flaws. Skyrim and Fallout 3 on the PS3, for example, would agonizingly lag because it never stopped saving. And the longer you explore, the bigger the save file. And the bigger the save file, the worse the lag. And the worse the lag, the more you want to toss your PS3 out the window. Oh, I have such a headache, I just can't stand it! Okay, I'll give them credit. Some of these glitches they were able to fix. Emphasis on some, but it saved them and us a whole lot of grief if they just fixed their creation engine or beta tested longer. Now, to be fair, it's not like they did this on purpose. It's not like they ruined the graphics of a game that even they didn't believe in. <sighs> Uh, Mr. Howard, a moment of your time. Yes, um, we have an upcoming title for a beloved franchise, and it appears that we've implemented a few... changes. We're taking what's a great RPG series and taking out all the RPG elements. We're also adding Always Online to an admittedly already unstable game. We're also retconning 20 years of lore and adding in multiple microtransactions that are also pay to win! Mr. Howard, I don't even think the games could be ready on launch. How am I supposed to market this? It allows us to have 16 times the detail. 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 We're dead. Even if you don't follow gaming news that often, I get to find someone who hasn't heard of the 
dumpster fire that was Fallout 76. Many, and I do mean many people have talked about what an absolute disaster this game is. So let's go over the highlight reel of failure. An RPG game with absolutely no NPCs to roleplay off of leave the world barren and lifeless turning an offline single player game into an always online multiplayer with no changes to the game engine which broke many of the game's functions. Graphical updates that were rushed or unfinished making the game look like complete garbage. When completing quests or exploring in the game, the rewards for doing so were usually junk, and most times that's literal. It does look like shit. But the king of all the screw-ups at this game would be Bethesda themselves knowing the game was terrible and needed more work and still releasing it nonetheless. The game's already been delayed twice, they said. It's a big open world, no one's gonna notice a few glitches. Oh, Bethesda. They then went on for months saying, nothing's wrong, everything's working as intended, the game isn't broken, you just don't appreciate what you have. <laughs> Everything is fine, nothing is ruined. Fallout 76 crashed hard after launch, with sale prices dropping down to $30 in less than two weeks. Heck, in Germany, they started giving away copies with the purchase of a new console. It became the game that everyone was talking about, but nobody wanted. And there is a silver lining to this whole mess, is that we got to see some hilarious videos by fellow YouTubers showcasing the absolute worst this game had to offer. Nuclear Winter's pretty great, though. We are bombs, you're in the sky. possibly be worse than Fallout 76, you ask? How about cheating developers out of money they earned? Obsidian are the developers of Fallout New Vegas, believed by many fans to be the best of the series. So why didn't they receive pay bonuses? Well, you wouldn't think that because the team didn't receive pay bonuses because the game didn't score high enough on Metacritic. Way to reward them for pushing out a full-length game in a year and a half, Bethesda. The developers even begged outlets for high review scores. And adding to that, there are rumors that Bethesda paid people to give New Vegas negative reviews. Okay, now I implore you to take that with a grain of salt because those are just rumors. This next part, however, was confirmed to have happened. Back in the 90s, Bethesda offered to publish Echelon, a new game by the fledgling studio Madia. Then, they pocketed all the money that they owed to Madia, and it gets even worse when you learn how poor the financial state of Madia was at the time. While it's not as flashy or blatant as the other fails on this list, the reason it's number one is that this isn't laziness or clumsiness or stupidity, it's completely intentional. I believe this is where Bethesda crossed the line, going from incompetent to straight up malicious. I'm the Fiery Joker, and man, seeing Bethesda fall off their pedestal, it's making me really depressed. I feel this weird urge to brood about it and be incomprehensibly pretentious in my wording. Oh no, next month, Square! Cut!